Okay. Hi, good morning and welcome back again. Um, so we're at the final session of the, the morning now um, before you get a nice extended break for a well-earned lunch. Um, and next up um, for this session, we've got Hilary Juma, um, who's the Data Science Community and Engagement Manager at the Data Science Campus at the Office of National Statistics. And she's going to deliver a session entitled Coming Together. Um, just, just by way of background, Hilary supports the cross-government data science community, uh, working with colleagues in the Government Data Science Partnership to coordinate and deliver the community programme, including hosting the Government Data Science Community of Interests and their annual community conference. Uh, prior to joining the ONS's Data Science Campus, Hilary worked as a parliamentary assistant and achieved a BA in politics and international relations with quantitative research. Um, so at this point, I'll hand over to Hilary. Again, if you do have any questions um, on, on Hilary's content, please do feel free to pose a question using the ask a question functionality at the bottom of the screen. So I'll hand over to you, Hilary, at this point. Cool. Good afternoon, I was going to say good morning, but like, because it's like 10 minutes to 12, so I'll say good morning. Hi, my name is Hilary, and thank you so much for the NHS R Community Conference team for inviting me to speak to your community. I've really enjoyed hearing about the amazing work of your community. I've listened to presentations such as Hexi Time, as well as an interesting one on, on how you can use ggplot to map um, brain atlases. So as mentioned, I'm a community and engagement manager and I work with the data science community members and the government data science partnership. The partnership is made up of the Office for National Statistics, Office for Science and the Government Digital Service. My role within the partnership is to help facilitate and create spaces for knowledge sharing within the community. So just to give a bit of background about the Office for National Statistics Data Science Campus, our motto is using data science for public good. The campus has produced publications such as the Fast Indicators of the Economy, the project uses novel data such as AIS shipping indicators, HMRC's value added returns, road traffic flow data for England to provide an early picture of activity that supplements official economic statistics. The campus also works with government and the public sector organisations to build their data science capability. We deliver a, different, a range of different programmes such as direct delivery of learning, um, programmes such as the MS, um, the Masters in Data Analytics and Government, and the Data Science Accelerator. Um, we're also building pipelines of data science talent through our apprenticeships at different levels and our graduate program. There are more details on the website, and I have a link section towards the end of my presentation, which I'll be happy to share afterwards. So getting on to the presentation. So why are we here today? Why are we here this week um, and the previous week? To connect, learn, and share from one another. One way I enjoy coming together with people is through music, in particular, singing. I'm not gonna sing for you guys today, even though I have my little Britney Spears mic, um, but through this presentation, we'll explain how what the key elements have enabled the government data science community to come together through a song. Just Cool. So one of my favorite songs is Through the Fire by Shaka Khan. It's a love song about trials and tribulations. The first line of the song goes, for a chance at loving you, I'll take it all the way. For the purpose of this talk, I'm not talking about romantic love, but filler, a filler type of love. In Greek philosophy, love exists in different ways. Filler is a type of love that focuses on friendship. An example of how filler is demonstrated by the quote from, Arist from Aristotle's um, from Aristotle's works, um, one thing for someone, what one thinks good, for his sake and not for one's own, and being inclined so far as one can to do such things for him. Communities are relational, built on connections, experiences of its members. Think of the communities that you're part of, the friends you've made along the way. So going into what the government data science community is, first and foremost, people. The community is made up of data science practitioners, enablers working in the public sector. For example, analysts, statisticians, data scientists, and program managers. What brings them together is the common interest in the use of data science for public good in analysis, operational purposes, and public products. To give a few examples of the work community members have done, um, a colleague at the Queen's Hospital Trust um, developed a pilot app using machine learning to assist triaging and accident emergencies. Um, Another team at UKH 
the UKHO, which is UK Hydrographic Office. Sorry if there's a lot of acronyms. Um, yeah, but anyway, um, UK Hi Hydrographic Office, um, which uses deep learning to map mangroves, forests, and swamps. On gov.uk, the data science community manual is a reference tool for our purposes. Um, we exist to bring together data scientists and improve data science capability across government, develop and share best data science best practice, help digital and other analytical teams work effectively with data scientists, discuss and challenge the ways government uses machine learning and artificial intelligence to improve services. So you may have heard within learning and development, the 70-20-10 learning model on how we develop during our professional lives. 70% of the time from challenging assignments, for example, working on a project that stretches your applied skills, 20% of the time from developmental relationships such as communities um, or through mentoring, and 10% of the time through formal training, such as the first week of the NHSR community conference. Alison Horst is one of my favorite data communicators, like the colors in her visualizations are so beautiful and the way in which she explains complex um, complex um, processes, with, especially within, the, um, within R, in a way that's so accessible. So in this image on the screen, um, I interpret Alison's image as showing that a code hero is not Superman in his fortress of solitude, but exists in a rich and living legacy of bloggers, mentors, friends, and more. Going back to our song, right down to the wire, even through the fire. This, life fo this line focuses on life's challenges. Some days are sunny, sunny, some days are storms, especially this year. Communities store tacit knowledge and help bring silos, bridge silos, sorry. Coming together um, enables us to do this. So every two to three months, um, the data science community of interest comes together to connect and showcase the work of its members. The image on the left is a screenshot from the data and government blog and gov.uk covering what has happened at our main meetup on machine learning. We've also focused on geospatial data science, natural language processing and careers and more. At the meetups, members have taken part in panels, presented about their experiences on projects, team leaders have taken part in Ask Me Anythings, so others can learn and share from their experiences. To note, we do have a meetup happening on the 19th of November, um, focusing on COVID-19, Brexit and wellbeing with pre presentations from the Joint Biosecurity Centre, Department of International Transport and HMRC and more. So annually, we host a conference where colleagues can connect, share, um, what they're working on around the theme. The photo is from our annual conference last year in Manchester on building data science skills, partnerships, capability and pipelines. Most recently, we hosted the fir our first digital festival um, in September, focusing on how data science is being used across the public sector to enable the new normal that the pandemic has brought. Focusing on sub themes such as operationalizing data science to trust, confidentiality and transparency. So um, within the community, there are different community groups. Some are self-organizing, some are supported by the Government Data Science Partnership, and some are supported by the Government Statistical Service, in particular the Best Practice Team. So just to give you a rundown about what different community groups do. Um, so we have BRAC Champions, um, who are supported by the Government Statistical Service Best Practice Team, who champion the use of reproducible analytical pipelines. This means promoting reproducible analysis, i.e. analysis with a clear audit trail that explains how and why it was carried out, and the use of reproducible analytical pipelines, i.e. the software, um, software methods used to make analysis reproducible, such as GitHub. Champions are expected to share their knowledge, provide advice and support to the members of the analytical community who want to learn more and implement reproducible an analysis and reproducible analytical pipelines. Um, another example of the community group is the departmental coffee encodings. They usually meet um, one hour, sometimes every week, sometimes monthly, where colleague or colleagues present what they've been working on. So to give you a few examples from the coffee encoding at the ONS, um, one colleague recently produced, uh, I say recently this year presented on building a Python package for reproducible statistical tables. Um, and another colleague presented on end-to-end -end machine learning um, using the hands-on um, hands machine learning book. Um, most departments have shared their presentation code on their GitHubs. Happy to share the, ON the links, the ONS ones afterwards. Um, and then another example of a group is the analytical platforms one. So colleagues who come together and need to order the different analytical platforms within their organizations to help colleagues make business cases based on their experiences. Um, three more community groups I want to go through. 
Um, so we also have um, the text analytical community that seeks to unlock the value of text anal analytics and natural language processing in the public sector. Currently, we're going through a consultation to help co-create the community group program. If you're interested, let me know. Um, the, we also host CrossGov um, COVID-19 coffee mornings. We meet every other week to discuss COVID-19 related analysis um, that we've been doing and document what we share. Um, if you're interested, also please email me. My email is at the end of this presentation. Um, and then last but not least, um, we also have a group called the Data Science, Ethics and Society Reading Group based at the ONS and gathers annually to discuss a theme within data ethics and society. Um, we recently finished a season on the book Data Feminism. It was a really good read, really recommend. Um, supplementary reading included um, the data ethics framework that's from gov.uk and videos on interesting talks. Our GitHub repo, which is linked in the presentation, which I'll share afterwards, um, also like documents some of the stuff that we've discussed. To note, we do have chat and house rules, so we try and ensure that what is discussed in the room does stay and the resources that are shared are free and accessible. Cool. Um, so moving on, another aspect of how we do life together. One of our major platforms, similar to the NHS, our community is Slack. Slack, a messaging tool for our community that connects, coordinates, and enables others to share. An example of some of the channels listed above um, on the slide, um, we also have a channel called Connect that enables colleagues to catch up one-on-one -on, -one on small groups. Um, another example of a platform is the Government Data Science mailing list, where we share what community events and initiatives we're supporting. For example, early on in the pandemic, we created a volunteering scheme where colleagues could support different teams with um, their capability needs. And last but not least, the Data in Government blog on gov.uk, which is an amazing source of stored knowledge in regards to what's happening within data in government. Cool. So back to my favorite artist, Alison Horst, because why not? Um, so um, the community and the Government Data Science Partnership believe in supporting data science capability, data science skills development. One of the key ways in which we do this is through the Data Science Accelerator. Mentors from the community match with mentees who are looking to develop data science skills. Over the course of 12 weeks, mentees have protected time once a week to develop their data science project with mentees. Including the current cohort, there have been 243 participants in total since the program started in 2015. So to give you an example of some of the projects, a mentee at DEFRA made a project on mapping vessel satellite, satellite landings data um, the mentee developed an online tool that maps landing data by user specified inputs. It allows users to query and visualize data. It's also reduced the number of requests to the marine management organization. A mentee at HMRC made a project on classifying businesses using text descriptions. So the mentee created a classifier that was developed um, that classified 85% of traders correctly across the large the largest trade classes. Um, HMRC, 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 which is Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, showed an interest in turning this into a productionized standard tool. To note, the next co cohort runs in, um, we're running in March and applications should be open around the end of January. Um, back to our song, because we can't forget the song. Okay, I can help you if only you let me try. When someone offers help, you usually assess the why and how before agreeing to do so. Help has to be consensual and radically inclusive to be effective. So when we design and ask, we really assess and design a, um, a community initiative, we ask, who are we excluding? How do we enable ideas from our members? When do we take time to reflect? And what could we do better? And what should we stop doing? When designing events, we try and ensure the best of our ability that there is an equal gender split between presenters. Um, when working across government, there are differences in technology platforms. Um, we try our best to ensure the platforms are, can be accessed and by all and make concessions where possible. In our retrospect, is we ask colleagues to let us know if they feel excluded by anything that we've done, and make changes where possible. Also, we encourage our members to share their skills with others via signposts and volunteering activities aimed at increasing underrepresented groups within our industry, as this could have a future impact on demographics of our um, sphere. Cool. So for the last part of our song, um, I would like to emphasize on this, um, the lyric, you touch me and something in me knew what I could have with you. This part of the song is about the emotional impact that people experience in relation to one another that consequently enables them to look at the future of what they can co-create. I'd like to share with you a story about one of our community groups. 
Life has been radically shifted this year by the pandemic. The pandemic impacts multiple spheres within the public sector. To support colleagues working in COVID-19 work, we've been hosting day, um, bi-weekly and originally at the beginning weekly data science um, coffee mornings. Um, and I had a colleague from, um, I, was, I was delivering this with a colleague, um, a data scientist who was chairing the, the coffee mornings. Okay. Like a stand-up where people can share what they're working on, um, colleagues can ask for help or provide offers. Connecting with practitioners had, um, has enabled sharing of methodologies, data sources, and a supportive community during these challenging times. Furthermore, helping to avoid duplication and encouraging the reproduction of code. Cool. So coming towards the end of the um, the presentation. So looking at impact and beyond. So some of the ways when we look when we look at impact impact is through metrics. So such as our SAC has 366, 366 seven members um, who come together to connect on um, to solve or um, unique or common problems. Um, we also do social audits. So I've been interviewing people one to one to share their experiences in their community and their roles. Um, we also try and map our community history via data and government. Um, on gov.uk and we host retrospectives on community initiatives to inform our renewal and way forward with our community roadmap. So from my experience, communities thrive on having a common purpose, people happy in, um, people who are happy in relation to one another, platforms that are accessible and programs that are relevant and thought provoking. Going back to Greek philosophy, love exists in different ways. Philip is that type of love that focuses on friendship. And to go back to the quote I mentioned from Aristotle, wanting for someone what one thinks is good for his sake and not for his, um, not for one's own, and being inclined so far as one can to do such a thing for him. So one of the things I kind of want to do as a call for action is like just continue like pouring into the community because what you what you pour in you'll get out of it, and and it has a much wider impact on um, the work that we do. Um, so yeah, there's been so many opportunities this week to do so, such as like the Hexi time. Um, and I've been so moved by the things that I've learned. So yeah, that's all I want to say. So thank you. Um, I'm happy to take questions. Um, that's my email address on the slide. Um, but yeah, and I've put some useful links of things um, covered in the presentation, such as the service manual for the community, data and government blog, uh, this really amazing like guide that I've been like using as reference material, the DSTL's biscuit book on artificial intelligence artificial intelligence, data science and machine learning, um, the data science campus website, as well as our GitHub, the community of interest that's happening next week. And um, also I mentioned about the reproducible analytical pipelines in our um, community and they actually have a course in Udemy that's free that goes over it. And last but not least, as well as the government analytical function career framework, which goes over like the ways in which you can progress to be a data scientist within um, yeah, the civil service. So yeah, cool. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Hilary. That, that's really great. Um, I, th I think you'd agree. Yeah, really different sort of thought-provoking and, uh, yeah, really inspiring session. Uh, lots to reflect on, a nice way to, to wrap up the morning um, after a lot of sort of, yeah, technical content. Um, and great to hear, yeah, the Data Science Accelerator getting a, a good plug as well. Um, lots of compliments on some of the content you referred to within the chat, Hilary. Um, mm -hmm. And also really like the Shaka Khan reference throughout. <laughs> um, we, we have got a couple of questions um, mm -hmm. within the, the Q&A function, um, but I'll just give people yeah, a moment just to pause and um, yeah, add any into there if they want to. You're also getting lots of compliments. So um, there's a question from Sarah Corkin who asks, do you have a role in publishing policy or guidance for doing data science to support local analysts? Um, for example, have have conversations with IT colleagues? Um, so I don't have a role in that, but I can refer you to someone. So if it's possible, could Sarah email me and I can see if I can refer um, refer to people in like the best practice team that I mentioned, um, if that's okay. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Um, and then, yeah, Mohammed makes a, a comment more than a question to say, can we clone Hillary for the NHSR community? Um, <laughs> And Zoe seconds that, so we'll, we'll go away and have a think about how we do that. Um, I think that's very much intended as a compliment. Um, and then there's a, another question from Zoe here. Okay. Um, is it okay for NHS and social care colleagues to come and join these cross-government initiatives? Um, so they can, so for some 
So for example, the data science community of interest definitely can attend um, the data science accelerator as well um, to note. Um, I know that sometimes with the data science accelerator, um, in fact, there's been people that's um, been from like NHS organizations that have been part of it. Um, and yeah, I think, yeah, the best that's what I'm trying to say. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm not necessarily the most coherent person sometimes, just like fully dyslexic, but the, the short answer is yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, I thought that's really positive. Okay, at that point, um, if, if there aren't any further questions from Hillary, um, Anastasia, we're looking to, to bring them all into a close and then people will get an extended lunch break. Yes, that's right. So uh, we will resume our talks today. It's going to be lightning talks. Uh, it's quarter past two. We have a brilliant lineup of speakers. We have speakers from uh, um, other countries. We have NHS as well as Department for Health and Social Care. So please join us if you can. Uh, hopefully I can share link to program once again. Uh, and uh, I will see you at quarter past two. And thank you again, Hilary. Uh, for joining us today and thank you both for hosting um enjoy your lunch that's fine thank you